Hey everyone, got some highlights from a diamond to ones coaching session I did. So if you're looking to improve your 1v1s, this video is for you. A lot of great tips that should help you with your own gameplay. If you're interested in coaching yourself, check out my Ko-Fi and make sure you join our community Discord just to chill out and have a good time. Enjoy the video guys. But before that, sponsor time. AOEA allows you to buy and sell Rocket League items at great prices. Whichever platform you're on, you can find that last item to finish off your preset. Use code VMN at checkout for a discount. And I'll leave the link to AOEA down in the description, so be sure to check that out. Yeah, nice strong kickoff. Okay. A little bit unfortunate mechanically there. Good aggression, still a boost. Make sure we get that boost as well. Okay. But if we take a look at this. Steal the boost. And then after you steal the boost, you kind of assume this very, uh, very passive positioning where you're kind of sitting in front of him and you're almost like, like, look at this distance between you guys, right? Like there's a lot of distance here. So you're, you're being very passive right now after you've stolen his boost. So this was like really aggressive and this was really good. And then you're also playing for this boost here, which is nice. Like I like this. I think what you could do is see if you, like, after you've stolen his boost, you can immediately like, this is kind of how shadowing works in Rocket League. You want to kind of take the cut out and go for a, like a wide berth. And what this allows you to do, it doesn't need to be that wide, it can be like, like this. And then if he's on the wall, what this allows you to do is it allows you to like cut in, right? And you can kind of like force him at different points. So you're basically taking the same line, like you're going back, but you're doing it in a different way where you're actually coming in from the side like this. And like if he's here with the ball and he sees you coming in like this, what's it going to force him to do? It's going to force him to like either hit it up the wall with no boost, it's going to force him to smack it away, um, or he's going to have to like be very patient and he's going to have to like hold fast and try and not panic, you know? So it's kind of like this active aggression stance that you want to have. You've kind of got the right idea of where you should be at the end, right? Like you want to end up getting this boost and end up like back here but like the pathing on the way back should be a little different like you should be cutting in and kind of trying to force something from him or something from him and then you reach this boost yeah basically yeah like trying to avoid trying to avoid getting in this situation where you're directly in front of your opponent because most of the time it's very disadvantageous to you and it kills a lot of the aggression that you could have while you're defending Okay. Nice, should be a free goal. Nice, you go back, you get the boost. You get 50. I try and just when it comes to 50 50s, you have a really strong 50 here. Uh, it's also on your corner, which makes it even better. Like most people in ones, like if I'm your opponent, I would barely ever take like a 50 50 against you here. So if I'm your opponent, I'm never going to challenge you here. Like, this is bad for him. So you want to take full advantage of that. And you want to, like, play for play for your recovery, almost. And the best way for you to recover is to play the wall. Like, play the corner here. So you want to, like, come into the 50 from the left. And you want to recover onto the wall here with, like, a, a right flip. This, this is, like, a bit more mechanical. It's also kind of game sense as well because you want to be playing for more than just the single touch and you have to recognize that what he's doing is really bad. So you kind of take full advantage of that. Whereas when we take a 50 like this, we don't play for our own recovery. We open up all this space and put the ball in this area where our opponent is going to naturally kind of path into. So now he's going to go for this boost over here or he's going to go mid and get this boost and then he's going to be able to turn and play for the new position looks like he'll probably go for mid boost ah oh, he just turns okay
Okay, good patience. That was nice. Nice try on the demo. I'm all for that. Good. Okay, get boost. Okay, so this is like a big thing in ones. Uh, this is in twos and threes as well. But it's very important in ones, obviously, because there's only two players on the pitch. But when it comes to like, uh, this is sort of a mind game when it comes to possession uh, and threat and shadowing. So if you think about this, right, like, I can see why you want to go for this, and you are right to push up. And this is kind of this. This is what I want you to change, right? I'm assuming you're going to end up doing this a lot in these replays. I think it's pretty common around like Diamond through Champ and kind of towards GC1, GC2. It can be quite common to fall into this mistake. And that is you actually do the right thing and you drive up. And then when you reach this pivotal moment, this really important point, you end up actually doing the wrong thing. And that is committing into the challenge like into the challenge. And what you want to do instead is you actually want to do exactly as you did, you want to drive up and you want to threaten your opponent, but instead of committing, you actually want to turn. Because what you've done here is you've driven up, and you've forced him to feel threatened, and as a result, he's going to pass the ball like this, right? Like, he's going to give away the possession that he has. And if you've committed into that challenge, you're not going to be able to capitalize on this possession that's now ended up here, because you're going to be here. So instead, you want to stay grounded, Drive up, and you want to force him to react, and then since you're staying grounded, afterwards you're going to be able to just drive over and take the ball for free. Super easy, super simple. It's not like hard to do mechanically, and it's very rewarding game sense wise. So this should kind of be like your default. Ninety percent of the time you should be doing this in ones, twos, and threes when it comes to possession. So your enemy has possession, you don't commit. You drive up, you threaten, and then they give it away for free. And you take. That makes sense. Okay. Nice. Good, really good patience. Good control. Okay. <laughs> it was very good to wrap up until that point. Alright, so excellent. This is what you should do all the time if you have space and you have possession. You should take your time if you have the opportunity to do so. Right here. In this moment. You need to be looking at your opponent, right? You see him underneath the ball. We have a good idea of where he is. He's very far away, right? Like there's no way he can turn and dive towards you super fast without you hearing him, without you seeing him, without you being able to respond, right? It'd be a really bad play for him to do. So what we need to do in this situation is once we get the ball and we can't see him anymore, like he's out of our vision now, yeah? And that suddenly makes him a threat. When you can't see someone, it makes them a threat. And I'm assuming that's why you flick the ball really fast. Because you no longer see him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I get you. And, and the way to fix that is to be watching your opponent and playing information, right? Like, you should always know if your opponent is going to challenge or not, based on information. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, that can be that can be a good idea. Well, what I kind of want to make you think about here, though, is like, there's going to be moments in the game, and this is one of them. Right? See where the ball bounces right here? It's an important moment because you can collect information for the next like five seconds, or maybe maybe not five seconds for the next few seconds, right? So. As soon as you stop seeing him, like you still know where he is because you collected that information a few seconds ago. And then you still know where he is, like he's not changed, you know. You still know where he is. Now you can even see him, right? Like, it's kind of this active thought process that you need to have throughout the game. Sometimes you're not going to be able to see them, and if you can't see your opponent, you need to have a good idea of where they are based off information you collected previously. Until you get into a position to actually see your opponent. The only qualm with you kind of clicking this so fast is because you should know that he's so far away that he can't actually challenge you that fast. 
So you can play time a bit more, just based off that. And dribble the ball up a little bit further. And then as you say, you start that diagonal kind of dribble, and then suddenly you've got eyes on. And you can just play it as far as you need to, until either he forces you to give it up through effective shadowing, or you get an opportunity to score. So it's kind of this, just, just make sure you don't give up the possession too early, if you've got the information that allows you to take space and take time. So just a, one more very small thing I want to touch on when it comes to, like, because you are flipping a lot, and sometimes it can be good to flip because you can, like, flip into, like, the next play almost, like, you can flip into a recovery, or you can flip so it ends you up on a boost, right, and those are the kind of times that you want to be thinking about your flips. So right here, when you actually make this save, you don't want to just be making the save. You want to be making the save and then putting yourself in a good position afterwards to follow. So what I'm kind of thinking is, if I'm in your, like in your position, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in to defend, right? And then I'm actually going to be a little bit deeper in the goal, and I'm going to like flip to the right. You know, this is like a really small thing, but it can help you improve maybe later on down the line. Um, and what that allows you to do is obviously, you're doing the same thing, right? You're saving the ball, and you're getting the boost, and you're putting yourself in a position to follow, um, or set something up, right? Whereas after this flip, you have to kind of awkwardly go for the boost, and then your pathing is just a little bit off, you know? Like the ball's here, and you're having to cut in. Not so much of, not so big of a deal if you're going for a ground play, but if you ever want to set up like air dribbles and stuff, it's very important that you're pathing into the air dribbles very, very clean. Yeah, very, yeah, you don't even need to think about that just now. Just thought I'd bring it up anyway. Here we get full boost. Okay. This was nice. A new challenge. Just taking another look, though. So the, the reason that I'm, I'm kind of pointing this one out, what you did here was good. Like you actually go for the challenge and you commit on it. But the problem I have is that you've, again, you've kind of, you've already gone back to this default turtle position without having any presence beforehand. So if we go back a little bit, let me look here. Like see, instead of beelining it back for this boost, considering you've already got full boost, you can actually like come back to here and then you could do a small turn in and like threaten him, right? And see if he passes you the ball. So it's kind of like immediately cutting off all this distance that you're giving him for free when you do a small turn here. Like you're you're threatening him, you're saying, hey look, you know, I'm not I'm not gonna give you all the space for free. You have to actually think about me and where I am and whether or not I'm gonna challenge you. And um, whereas you go all the way back. And then you get the full boost. And if this guy is like a... I'm just going to say like if he's a better player. The fact that there's so much distance between you and him. He's going to be able to read the fact that you're challenging, right? Because he can hear you. He can see you. Like he's going to be... I mean he can't see you just now because the ball's in front of his car. But he can hear you, you know. And he's going to flick the ball based off, based off that. Because he has a lot of response time to do so. Because of the distance you gave him for free. Just uh, be careful with this kind of turtling defense that you seem to be opting for. It can sometimes result in giving your opponent a lot, a lot, and just too much space to play with. 